Welcome, friends, to my messy workshop where I'm going to take you along for today's project, which is taking a cassette, a cheap cassette player, and making it be able to play backwards whenever you want, and uh, also adding a speed option. But uh, a lot of people know how to do that, and so that isn't, uh, that isn't as exciting. But these particular uh, cassette players were designed for... Um, they all come from China, probably made by the same manufacturer, but with different designs and things like that, and uh, are uh, for converting your cassettes to USB or MP3s or something like that. I don't use any of that process. I'm not really interested in it. I'm interested in lo-fi noise stuff. So... The first thing you want to do with one of these, and I'll put a link in the description about how to, uh, about what it's actually called, and those sort of things. You can see this has a cool design. Yes, it is fine. Um, but the first thing that you do want to do is to make sure it works and make sure it has, it's loud enough. Test all of the options, uh, forward, reverse, all of that. It's pretty cool. It uh, just is uh, just what it is. I'll put it on the overhead and we'll start up. Okay, here we go. First, the first thing is to try it out. You don't want to get way into a soldering project or a modification project only to find that it doesn't work. This is stop button, the rewind button the fast forward the switches between the looping or not looping and that little button is the one that then reverses the tape direction now I'm gonna take off the cover because I don't need it and it's sweet and fancy and all that sort of stuff so I'm gonna pull out the little pin that holds it on I've seen some people just tear it off and that works too but I like to be a little more uh, conscientious of what I'm doing <clears throat> I don't need a fancy top and it makes uh, getting to the screws a little bit tougher anyway there's an extra spring that's left over but you know what are you gonna do the uh, engineering and manufacturing on these uh, little devices and many of the toys and stuff that come out of China are pretty stellar uh, not so much for the assembly, which is why you checked it the first in the first place, but uh, maybe they're not paid as much. These are the three screws that uh, hold in the chrome piece, and there's even three tinier screws that hold in the the black case on the back. You do want to save these screws or remember which set of screws goes to which ones. There's really three sets of screws in this: the top chrome the black case and then one for the PC board that uh, that you'll also need. This is the little screws that uh, go into the into the sides and they are tiny. Um, they're also going into a little plastic tab so be careful with them when you're putting them back in that you don't uh, strip them out because it's pretty easy to do and they're really just to hold the case in against itself um, the clips do a lot of the work so to remove the clips you have to do some pressing um, pressing the sides apart I use the spooger uh, you do need to get to the switch um, those uh, little clips then uh, that you see all the time in these plastic things or the things that you use to pull apart and it comes off pretty easily once you jimmy it squeeze it back and forth and and sort of work it out there's also a little screw here that is holding the PC board against the chrome piece that you want to take out and there's the last of the screws so save it too it's really used to hold the PC board in place well so that it doesn't press up against the uh, the belts. Now open it up. You'll notice there's a piece of uh, 
what a little gray area in the middle of the chrome piece that's a big blob of grease and you really want to avoid touching that or and or getting it all over the belt drives and the uh, the playhead because it's a uh, heck to get off I know <laughs> here in the lower right of the metal part is the screw we're concerned with the switch that we're concerned with and then the screw that we unscrew to release it from the uh, metal um, it is the switch that is connected to the five wires going to the playhead at one ground and two red and two yellow they are the left and right red left and right yellow left and right um, so you unscrew that screw and pull it out be careful not to pull too hard on the playhead wires or the wire leading back to the amp but this is the this is the switch we're going to use to just play it back and forth now I'm going to be adding the speed control and you don't have to do this I do have a shorter and probably more concise YouTube just for doing the reversal switch at the regular speed um, that uh, I'll leave the link for in the description the red and black wires are the two motor wires and I think I'll get a better shot of it of of it close up for you here in a sec now we are going to want to desolder the two wires leading to the motor and uh, there you can see them the red motor wire and the black motor wire uh, connected to the PC board I say black and red because sometimes they're not consistent with positive and negative uh, but it seems to be uh, pretty consistent the gray shielded wires coming from the tape head and going to the amplifier the white the red being left and right and then a ground wire now since I desoldered those I'm going to take them out of course testing at this point can't be done but they're going to hook, be hooked up to a motor controller now back on the other side with the switch we want to make sure that there's enough room for the cassette tape and the switch to be exposed um, so put one in sort of see where it should go uh, and go ahead and mark it uh, you're going to end up also pushing the wires back into the into behind the chrome piece um, so that it doesn't conflict with the cap stand so go ahead and hold the switch there mark it for where you want to go I this last one I did a little too close to the cap stand you can move it a little higher to the right upper right so that it has a little more clearance but you don't want to yank on those uh, those playhead wires too much this is to prevent soldering I mean you could move it wherever you wanted to honestly but I would want to keep it simple <laughs> so make sure uh, to oh and we also have to remove the uh, the chrome piece because now we're going to cut into it and you can see our little mark if I zoom in yeah that's a, you want it slightly smaller than the switch because you can file and make it uh, just the size that you want now I'm going to speed this up but uh, this is just me using the scroll saw to uh, cut out the notch. I'm a scroll saw guy, so I, that's what I do. Um, but it's a kind of a soft plastic, and many plastics on these things are brittle, so you want to just let the, the, uh, the saw or whatever you use go slow. If you use a cutter, sometimes it splits the whole thing, uh, you know, like a diagonal cutter or whatever to cut the plastic this kind of plastic is pretty brittle so there's our little notch and we'll put it back in see if it uh, see if it fits move it around a little bit and it's gonna need some widening but not not by much so then go ahead and file just enough off to let it hold in there and you know you can use uh, glue or um, 
hot glue, whatever, to hold it in once you've got it in the right place. But hot glue can get messy, and you don't want to mess with anything related to the uh, to the drive mechanism itself. Uh, the the uh, wires are already well soldered in, and you know can be a good idea to put a little blob of hot glue, but you don't need to in this case, I don't think. Uh, see that it fits, and yes, it slides in there pretty good and stays at least temporarily. So we can test it out before it permanently is mounted in there or glued in there. You're also going to want to tuck those wires in to behind the uh, cap stand so that it, they don't get dragged through the with the tape or slow the tape down. You know, that's that's the thing. Now I am going to resolder the wires back to the battery. Um, I should be soldering the ones leading to the uh, the drive for the motor, but uh, I forgot, and we'll have to catch ourselves up on that. So I solder the negative and solder the positive back on. I like to tin those ahead of time. So we flip it over and we attach the wires coming from the batteries, the positive and the negative there. I'm using yellow and green instead of red and black so that I can know which is which when I close it all up. Uh, and you want to make the green one or make the one that goes all the way across underneath the batteries, uh, give it some slack so that um, it has room for the battery so it doesn't conflict with the batteries. Once you do that, then you run it through the little hole that uh, provides the three volts for the, uh, for the side, or you can cut your own hole if you want to use that, that's fine. Uh, but make sure to leave some slack. And now we slap it back together. Those clips are uh, feisty. <laughs> but anyway, uh, it all snaps pretty well once you get it lined up. And you see where are the holes, the hole is for the three volts in, uh, and I've just have the wires coming out of there. So let's grab the motor controller still in the package. These things run about three dollars a piece, something like that. Um, they're PWM or pulse width modulation <laughs> uh, controllers that then um, don't necessarily change the voltage sending to the motor but do so with uh, pulse width which is uh, kind of a square wave that then um, the more frequently the, the wave goes up, the, higher, the faster the motor is going to run. Um, it's actually the way the motor is run on the, this particular unit. Some are voltage controlled, some are PWM. But these things are pretty cheap and easy to attach because it's even got little screw heads to uh, connect to the wires, which we're going to do. Um, there's positive and negative from the battery, uh, which I'm using the green and yellow, and then the uh, the other two or go to the motor. Once you've done put all the wires in, then uh, it's a good idea to test it out just to see if it's getting power, and we'll even maybe play something to see if that then it's working properly. So we'll go with a little Lionel Richie. <laughs> yes. Indeed. And try the other side backwards. Oh, 
singing about habaneros. Backwards and slow. And that was, must be the, ooh. Still saying about habaneros. All right, let's see what that was. Habaneros is, mm, serve you right. Oh, let's see. Hmm. Okay. Is something binding? No. Nope. Oh, serves you right. That isn't right. Poor Lionel. So that's pretty much it. And mount this in some way that you want. I myself going to cut this guy off which is the tab on the switch that held it to the chassis it just sort of sticks out okay could turn it a little bit farther but that would be pulling on those wires as long as I can get the tape in and out Thanks for watching.